first off, find a comfortable seat. You can play the playlist that's listed there. It is like a lyrical Halloween music to get you in the mood, but if you'd rather something quiet, we can put that on. And just start by noticing your breath, noticing your body, not changing anything. Just coming to stillness. And now, if you want, you can start to deepen your breath. If you've joined me for yoga before, you may have a type of breath that speaks to you. If not, we're gonna do square breath today. So let's inhale, two, three, hold, two, three, exhale, two, three, and hold out, two, three, inhale, Hold, exhale, and hold it out. Inhale, hold, exhale, hold. And continue at your own pace, finding the speed and depth that works for you. And as you do that, I'll just go over again. I am riffling designs of riffling designs, and this is designs for Zen Yoga. In it, we practice what I call Bob Ross style yoga, where you do what works for you. If at any time something feels uncomfortable or painful or you just don't feel like it, guess what? You don't have to do it, especially because I don't see you. You just see me. So do what works for you and have fun. As you see, totally having fun today. So make sure that you do what works for you. At the same time, don't compare yourself to anyone. And not just in this yoga, but any time. You're yourself. You are not me. Maybe I can't do certain things and maybe I can do a couple of pretzel moves in yoga, but guess what? Everybody has a different body and some bodies literally can't get into certain pretzel moves. So when you're doing yoga, be sure to do what works for you to challenge yourself, but not to go too far because the only person that you should impress is yourself. And even yourself, trust me, you don't have to prove anything to yourself. Just have fun. So we're gonna continue now to breathe on your own for just a minute. Again, totally relaxing, finding that breath that works for you. All right, now we're gonna set our intention. So come back to your normal breath. Begin to think about what you want to set your practice to today. For me, it's gonna be appreciating and being mindful and really enjoying this Halloween weekend. It's my favorite season, as I said before, and if I'm not careful, sometimes it goes by too fast. So for me, it's gonna be enjoying the moment. You can pick any other one that you'd like. Set it now and on an inhale, raise your arms up. Exhale, draw hands to heart center, thinking of that intention. We're gonna seal it with two breaths. First one to cleanse, inhale. And deep exhale. And then the last one, a really big breath in. And let it all go. Welcome to your Halloween practice. We're gonna start off again doing my style. So we're gonna do lots of time warming up, starting with shoulder rolls. I like to do the four corners. So let's in, up, back, exhale down, and forward. Inhale up, and then back. Exhale down, and forward. Again, go at your own speed. And one thing that's funny about doing costume yoga in particular is not only do you have to listen to your own body, but you have to listen to your own costume. So when I do that shoulder shrug, I can feel the fabric tightening. So maybe just because of the costume, I can't do certain moves today and that's fine. That shows that you're being mindful. Now we're gonna reverse. So going back, inhale up, 
forward, exhale down, back, up, forward, and down. With your breath, continue. Finding release, maybe lingering in a certain position if you really need to stretch that out. Again, you do you. You don't have to listen to me at all. And then next, when you're ready, we're just gonna do like a little, I'm gonna clasp my hands behind my back and just really get that good stretch, maybe a mini back bend here. Breathe into it. In all things, breathe. If there is one thing that you can do in yoga, just come back to your breath if you need a break. Now we're gonna do neck rolls, so only do this slowly and don't do full circles to start, but drop your head and go one side halfway. So you're gonna drop it down and go the other side and just slowly do these half circles. And if there is a point that is sore, you can pause there, linger, and take your nose and just rotate the point in front of your nose and maybe you'll find a place that's even tighter. I tend to find always if I rotate my neck while I'm turning, I find very tight spots. Couple more here. And when you're ready, come back to center and then take your head and move it to one side. So you're taking the top of your head towards your shoulder. And if you want here, you can place that same side hand above the head and maybe take your opposite arm and stretch it out. Just adding gentle pressure onto your head, nothing too hard, but just enough to enhance the stretch. And remember to use that nose point to see, ooh, if that's the right angle for you and you will find it. Breathe in here. Keeping that nice tall posture, shoulders back and down. Breathe into the stretch. Relax, savor the moment. And when you're ready, lower those hands if they're up and then roll the neck forward, going to the other side. Again, notice when you take your head towards your shoulder where the tightness is, maybe taking that same side hand, gently placing it on your head to enhance the stretch, taking your opposite arm out, and then again, using your nose to find an angle that is tight for you. Notice if it's different than the other side, oftentimes it is. Every day your body is different. One day you might be able to do something, the next you might not. One day one side might be sore, the next day it might not. It can vary greatly and that's part of yoga is noticing and acknowledging that your body changes. All right, let it go, come back down. And now any other neck movements you need, if you can do a full circle safely, go right ahead. If it's uncomfortable, you don't have to. And again, if you do go one direction, you have to go the other way. We talk about balance and doing both sides equally here. And now anything in your neck and shoulders that you need, just shake it out. We're gonna inhale, arms up. We're gonna do some twists to the side here. Breathe into it. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, maybe twist a little more. And then inhale up to the other side. Noticing again, any differences here. Inhale to go a little higher. Exhale, maybe to twist a little more. And now it's up to you whether you want to go back and forth really fast to warm up or if you're staying with me and you just want to go really slow. If you're going side to side, do any other movements you need to get your spine, the twisty side, warmed up. And if you're with me, again, feel that nice deep stretch where you need it. Keep those sit bones down. Continue to breathe. And wherever you are, we're gonna find our way back up with hands up. And then we're gonna exhale, fold over. So again, if you need to adjust yourself, feel free. If you wanna block here, feel free. And notice yourself in your costume. And we're just doing a forward fold with your sit bones down as far or as not far as you can go. And breathe. Of course, you always have the option of doing the standing if it's more comfortable. No worries. I'm gonna stay here because this feels really good. <laughs> like I said, this is uh, the Rift Wing Special Yoga. <sighs> and then slowly walk your hands back up. We're gonna do arms and wrists now. So first we're gonna take our hands out, hands on shoulders, do some chicken, chicken dance, you know. 
I love to do this one. Uh, you can swing them either way or both ways. Just have fun with making your little chicken wings move around. Maybe pull them back, maybe move them forward, side to side, swirl it. See how your wings are doing today. And if you wanna do the chicken dance, you can do that too. That's totally fine. And if that feels good, again, anytime you need to stretch out, go right ahead. Then we're gonna take our shoulders we're gonna do the Macarena, so one hand's out, the other hand comes and puts your hand on the palm and you're stretching out here. So you're doing like that little carpal tunnel stretch. Again, only as far as what works for you. If you put your fingers across the palm and the thumb, you'll get a much deeper stretch. This can also be done against the wall or on the desk or any solid surface if it feels better. And remember to keep those shoulders back and down here. Breathe into it. And then release, other hand out. The hand goes on the palm, stretching back, other side. Shoulders back and down, breathing into it. Again, finding that aid of the wall if you need it. Ah. It feels good already, right? And then we're gonna take it and just do your wrist rolls, whichever way feels good for you. Really getting rid of any of that stress, maybe even shaking it out a little bit because we all use our computers a lot and our phones too. So this is good to take that little break. All right, next we're gonna do the woobles, I call them. So you interlace your fingers and just kinda do your little 50s dance here. Notice which elbow's going up first and then try and take the other elbow up first. There is an opposite flow. <laughs> it's one of the more fun parts of doing this is realizing when you do stuff a certain way, even interlacing your fingers, you could interlace them the other way and try that, right? And when you're ready, just interlace them again and stretch out. Just pushing against it, rolling your shoulders back and down and breathing. And again, because this is my style, we're gonna do some finger stretches really quick. So you're gonna take your thumbs and just move them in and out, up and down, one at a time, or both together, that works actually better. So you're just rotating your thumbs, your fingers can be out or down, like you can do a little thumb more kind of thing with yourself. Just stretching those thumbs. Okay, then index fingers, same thing. Move them around, notice the rotation, notice the bend. Just move them around those sockets. And then our favorite, the middle finger, <laughs> which I will do my middle finger together with the piece finger, just because it's on video. But feel free to practice flying your birds right here. Notice any movements. Notice if one is looser than the other for some reason. And then ring finger. For me, I can't actually lift my ring finger by itself. Uh, again, noticing the differences, trying to get that stretch and having those fingers move. And then pinkies. Get your little piggies and have them dance around. Okay, a little different. And then shake it out again. If you need more wrist rolls, go right ahead. So we've now finished our upper body. And for our lower body, we're gonna do a little bit sitting and then we're gonna do a little bit on our knees. So just first, we're gonna extend one leg out, other leg in, and just rotate your torso to the extended leg. You can sit up here straight and then keeping your spine long, fold over that leg, breathing into it here. Maybe here you can even roll your neck a little bit. See if you can't loosen it up a little more. Remember, it's not about the depth of the stretch or touching your toes here. It's about finding a release and relaxation. Breathe into it. And again, if you have a strap and you wanna put that around your toes, you can. I have a whole series on aid yoga that teaches about using straps and blocks and pillows. And as a bonus, we're gonna be doing our foam roller and weighted blanket is the next two months. So look forward to more ways to enhance your practice. On an inhale, draw yourself up, switch sides. And again, if you need to shake out your hips on the way across, go right ahead. And then come up, keeping the spine straight, fold over, making sure your torso is facing that leg. Breathe into it again, maybe let your head down. Move your neck on this side, see how different it feels. And again, the uh, riffling style yoga is such a slow start. 
At this point in a fast yoga, you guys would have already done about 20, 30 vinyasas. We're still stretching here. <laughs> so welcome to my practice. <sighs> I just think it's so important to recognize your body before you start to move it. I even do yoga stretches in bed before I get up every day. Just a little bit to see how I'm feeling. To say, oh body, it's good that we can work together again. <laughs> Inhale, come on up. Then both legs out in front of you if this works for you. If not, you can do a standing fold. Inhale up, exhale, come down. Again, only as far as what works for you. Keeping the spine straight at first. And then maybe allowing a little bit of curl if that works. Breathing here. And then inhale, come on up. Now we're gonna do our feet. So it may work better for you to stand if you want. Again, holding onto a wall or a chair. But what we're gonna do is raise one foot up and just roll those ankles around both directions. You may hear popping and cracking, that's totally natural. Again, as long as there's no pain, you're fine. And then wiggle your toes, even try to spread out your toes. So here, let me show you. They, they're actually distanced. <laughs> Here we go, there's a foot shot of your yoga practice. See that? I'm stretching out the toes, and then I can try and make my big toes stick out. Like that. See how far your foot can go. See how far your foot can go. All your little digits. And then give it a stretch, take the other leg up, roll those ankles. And then wiggle your toes. See if you can spread out the toes on this foot. And then maybe see if you can roll the other ones down and stick up your big toe on this side. Oh yeah, look at that. It's not perfect. If I hold it down, it helps. But I think I broke a couple toes at one point. <laughs> Again, everybody's different. And then shake them both out. Now we're gonna do the, um, you know how you interlace your fingers? We're gonna do that with our toes. So for me, I have to use my hands to do this, but take your feet together and see if you can interlace every other toe by squishing them together and making your little interlaced toesies. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Ta-da! Interlaced toes. This, is, this could feel weird. Um, for me, I actually feel a bit of a massage as each of the toes presses against each other. So again, if it feels bad, don't do it. But if it does, enjoy that really weird feeling of your toes holding them, themselves together. And again, we're doing a butterfly pose here. So your feet can be as far forward or as far back as you want. Even doing a forward fold here will give you a little extra stretch as your toes do some work. And notice which big toe is on top. Now we're going to try and do the other side. So unlace your toes, put the other big toe on top and interlace. Dun, da, da, da. Notice if it's easier or harder. Notice if your feet are like completely foreign and alien to you right now. <laughs> Welcome to Halloween yoga where spooky stuff happens and you're like, what the heck are you doing, Rift? All right. Again, maybe you want to enhance that stretch. I'll tell you, this feels tighter with my right toe on top. Very cool, huh? Very cool. Okay, then unwind your little footsies. Give them a nice big old stretch. And what we're gonna do now for one more foot stretch is we're gonna go into uh, one that can be very intense. You may wanna have a pad or a pillow or a blanket underneath you, but we're gonna go up on our knees, minding our tail. And so I've got my toes tucked under, and then you just sit back on your toes with the toes tucked. This gives you an intense stretch Okay, it's a type of hero pose. If it's too much, feel free, but if it is just intense, you can breathe into it here. Maybe coming back to a deep breath, focus on your intention. That tightness in your feet, again, is from not moving them in certain ways. For me, it took about six months to really get the intense pain away, and now I feel it, but it doesn't hurt like it did before. It wasn't uh, a bad stretch, and actually in bed, I tuck my toes like this when I'm laying on my belly. I pull my toes under, and then I use that as another one of those big stretches for the toes and the back of the legs. If at any time it's too much, you can shake it out by 
popping your feet and just kicking them like this, but I'm gonna hold it for another 30 seconds. Try not to knock over my tombstones. Focus on your breathing. If you'd like here, you can take your arms up and do a bind one way or the other. Again, if you have a strap or a towel, you can do things with your upper body here, or maybe you stretch side to side, again, to distract you from your feet. If you do one side, do the other. Just like this. So now I can feel it. <laughs> It's not painful, but it's, it's that stretchy feeling like if you run a lot and your legs are burning. So not painful. All right, and when you're ready, again, plant your hands, kick those feet out, tapping the tops of your feet against your mat. And if you need to here, feel free to do a down dog, tucking your toes like that, or if you need to roll over, if you need water, if you need a break, feel free. I'm gonna mind my tail and come back over this way. Now we're gonna go into our table. So hands and knees, shoulder and hip distance, nice square body, tails nice and centered here. We're just gonna do this cat-cow. So again, exhaling into cow, in, uh, <laughs> exhaling into cat, of course, it's black cat. And then to cow. So exhale, cat, inhale, cow. So maybe focus on moving your rib cage so it's going up and then moving your rib cage out through your shoulders here. And you'll notice a different stretch. Some people say to focus on your tailbone, but that can make your spine move too much. Or if focusing on tucking and stretching your tailbone works for you, go right ahead. But if you have any kind of back injury, be careful. It's true about anything in yoga, really. <laughs> now, if you want to introduce motion, maybe looking side to side, feel free. If you want to roll those hips out, feel free. Again, this is your practice. Take your cat cows to where you need them. And again, if you've been with me before, you know I personally really love to go into a little seal here, a little, little cobra, and do some big old spine stretches because I got a stretchy spine. Okay, and now from here, inhale, leg up, pressing your heel back, looking down in between your hands, we're just gonna pump it here, so lifting your leg up and down, breathing. Plant it behind you into a little lunge. Again, we're stretching the backs of those feet and toes that you just did. And then what I like to do is take my foot and cross it over the other one. And look over my back the other way. So I am <laughs> literally looking at my tail here. I can't see my foot, that's awesome. <laughs> and then we're gonna drag our toes around, minding our props, to the side, and we're going into gate pose. So I'm just gonna turn so, well, we'll see. <laughs> it may or may not be better. So this is your gate pose. Then you can come back up onto your knees. Again, maybe you need a cushion under that knee, but this is gate. We're gonna inhale, arms like a T, and then come over to the extended leg, feeling that good side stretch. Go as far as you want. Then come back up. Using your core, go the other way, planting your hand, breathing here. If you want and you're steady, you can try and raise that other leg. So it's kind of like a side lift. And then lower that foot back down. Use your core, lift, 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 lift. Good, then come back down onto your hands. I'm just turning to show you. So your, your leg is still out. Then if it's comfortable, lower your seat. And so you're getting a deep groin stretch. Keep the blade of your foot down. Oops, I'm too far up. Keep the blade of your foot down on the ground and you'll get a nice deep stretch here. This is very similar to the Jacko pose, except your butt's not in the air. I think it counts because it's Halloween, right? Breathing. And again, you can always come back to child's pose if it's uncomfortable. If you're with me, walk your hands back up, lift your bum, take your foot, stretch it, lift it, push back with it. Now it's behind you. And then lower down. Good job. All right, I'm just gonna turn around because this tail <laughs> really makes teaching yoga more fun. Okay, other side now. We're lifting up that leg, pushing back with our heel. Breathe. 
Maybe pump it a little bit, lifting up and down. And you're looking down, keeping your neck straight. And then plant your toes, pushing back into that low lunge. Runner's lunge here. And then drag your toes around across your other foot and then look over your shoulder. Looking at your tail. And now you drag your toes around, coming into gate on the other side. Whew. There we go. <laughs> and then lift yourself up. Hands come to a T. First folding over the extended leg. Breathing here. Then coming back up, using your core to sink to the other side. Ooh, that one feels great. Again, if option here to lift that extended leg, if it feels right for you. Ooh, it feels shaky for me. <laughs> and then lower down, use your core to lift up. And then go down onto your hands again. And from here, oops, I'm gonna do it this way for you. Keeping that blade of your foot down, you can actually see it this way. Sink down onto your bum, into that modified Jacko pose. Remember to breathe. So, so far we've done a cat pose, a black cat pose, and Jacko pose. <laughs> Put your suggestions in the chat. <laughs> I'm doing this all freestyle, so we'll see what other spooky stuff happens. And we got another half an hour, so all good. Inhale, using your hands, come back up to all fours, lift your bum, pull your foot back again, keeping it lifted, hold it up for a second, and then lower back to your all fours. Whew. Okay, so here I'm just going to again do any movements that I need, because that was a lot for my legs, but it was really fun. We're going to tuck our toes and go into your first downward facing dog. Breathing here, maybe pedaling your feet out, shake your head yes and no. And if you wanna do some flows here, some salutations, go right ahead. All I'm gonna do is walk my feet up, come to a forward fold, and just hang out here. I'm grabbing my elbows just to get a rag doll in, finding balance with my tail. Maybe you have that micro bend in your knees, because again, it doesn't have to be a deep fold, you just want to feel it. And then halfway lift on an inhale, exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Come to mountain pose. So from mountain pose here, feel your feet. Remember you were extending your toes earlier, so lift your toes, stretch them out, and then plant them again. Feeling weight on all the corners of your feet. Breathing here. <laughs> I'm glad you're enjoying, Kermit. All right, so from here, we're gonna go into lunges. Again, if you wanna do, do a flow, we're all gonna meet into a crescent lunge in the front. So feel free to do a down dog and do your flow if you want. For me, I'm just gonna step right into it here. Crescent lunge, so the feet are parallel, heel on the back is lifted. Arms come up, shoulders down, so you've got a nice open stance. Breathing. So what I'd like to do is take my hands and put them behind my back, because it feels good to me. Find whatever arm position works for you. And I really shine my chest and do a baby back bend here. So this is a stretch I do every day before I run. Then what I do is I open up my arms, like a warrior too, but my feet stay still. So you're gonna feel a twist and a stretch here. Again, do what works for you. Then, after a couple breaths, inhale up, twist the other way. It's going to feel weird. Hold it. Come back up. Good. Then what I do is I put my weight into my front foot, and I come up, grab my knee. Again, if you need to hold something for balance, feel free. Then I open up and do a little hip stretch here. And then I grab my foot into the thigh stretch. Again, this is your practice, so you don't have to do what I do. I'm just going to scooch back here so you can see. There we go. So I've got my little stretch here, my hamstring stretch. 
Now from here, I actually go into dancer's pose. So you've got that balance already. Remember to keep a little micro bend in your foot, in your foot, in your knee. And then you're stretching out, kicking your foot into your hand and going into dancer. Breathe here, find your balance. And then if you can, hold your foot, come back in, keep holding it, hug it in, and then step it forward and ta-da, you're on the other side. Again, if you wanted to do a flow here, feel free. But now we're doing a lunge with the other foot forward. Heel is back, knees bent. Take your arms up. Find that arm position that works for you. And then you know what's gonna happen. Arms come up, twist one way, breathe. Holding your balance, keeping your feet still, inhale up, twist the other way. Notice the difference. And back up, putting the weight in your front foot. You're lifting up and grabbing your knee. And then maybe opening your hip, giving yourself a little standing balance twist. Again, keeping a micro bend in that knee and then tuck your heel under. I'll go this way for you. Oops. <laughs> it's okay to fall, just do it safely. And we're doing again that stretch on the other leg. Breathing into it, making sure you keep your balance, keep that little bend in the standing foot. And when you're ready, maybe try a dancer on this side. So you're kicking your foot into your hand and then allowing the torso to move forward. Dancer pose. It's so much easier when my tail touches the ground. Look at this. <laughs> and then holding your foot in, kick it up gracefully. <laughs> Find your way back down. All right. So that's some of the really fun stretches that I like to do every day. And it's yoga style, and it's also, in general, just super fun. So now we're gonna do a little bit of a cardio stretching. Which I may or may not keep my tail on for. So we're on um, on our bum, I guess. <laughs> I probably could have done a yogi squat, but I saved you here. So first thing we're gonna do is boat, navasana. Uh, for that, again, you're keeping your weight on your tailbone. Then you lift, and you, if you're hugging yourself like this and you're just keeping your weight off the ground, that's good enough. But if you're with me, again, you can put your legs out. Maybe you release your hands. Maybe straighten your legs and so you're holding here. And I like to do low boat, high boat which surprisingly with the tail behind me, I have a little cushion. So again, noticing your own body. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. And I like to do four or five, but stop when you need to. Good. And then lower your feet down. We're gonna come onto our backs here. Oop, <laughs> there goes the rat. Uh, I'm going to have to take off my tail for this. All right. Whew. Again, know, know thy body. Okay. So we're on our backs. And I like to do a little bit of crunches. So feel free to do your sit-ups or crunches of your style. Noticing I've got a zipper in the back, so it hurts a lot. So I'm not going to do many. And I'm going to do small ones, but do your sit-ups. And I like to do bicycle sit-ups. Breathing. And then hug your knees in and we're gonna do some lifts and lower. So feet go up. Again, if you need a strap, you could do just holding it here with your feet flexed, toes flexed. So then you let go and you lower them slowly to the ground. And we're gonna do sets of this. So if it's too much, you can stop. Maybe you just want to do leg stretches like that. But before you touch the ground, you lift back up. <laughs> you try to keep your legs straight, but I'm shaking already. I like to do two or three of these, up to six. It's focusing on your core. I'm actually pressing with my hands and shoulders here. Use your whole body to try and do this. It's a body weight fitness. Just lifting your legs can be incredibly difficult. Maybe you need a break. You can hold your legs here. 
want to do one more. <laughs> so the last one you come up, really straighten out, try to get that good posture. Again, don't do it if it hurts, but if it burns, that's okay. Then slowly, slowly, slowly lower your legs all the way down. As slow as possible, breathing. Focusing on pressing into the ground here. You got this. Deep breaths. Oh, and when it touches, you're going to feel that release in your lower back and your abs. Whew. That's a great job. Okay, so that's it for abs, I think. <laughs> then you roll over. And I have physical therapy, so when I do my routine, I go into my physical therapy here. So I go flat on my stomach, okay, like in crocodile pose. And then I put my hands in front of me. I look down at the mat and then I lift my arms like Superman, except the blades are facing up and down. And I just lift. You can keep your head down here. You don't have to lift your chest, but you're lifting your arms and just doing a set of 10. Lifting your arms. So this is helping your shoulders and your neck. And then relax. Then we do T. Oh, I wish I could do one arm with. <laughs> so you make a T and you pull your shoulder blades together and lift your arms here. And I like to actually lift my feet in this one and tuck my chin and get a little double workout in. So I'm doing chicken wings here because I don't have enough space to do full arms. Once you do 10, you're good. Rest, maybe put your head to the other side. And you're like, why are we doing cardio? <laughs> well, again, this is kind of my yoga, so I mix a little bit just to make sure you get that fitness in. In normal yoga yoga, I would not do this much cardio. Trust me, you have other videos on YouTube that are much slower. All right, so now we're gonna do the hard stuff. Arms, push-ups. Um, fold my knee in that because my knees are sensitive babies. Do any style you need, I do bent knees. Do as many push-ups as you want. Swear a lot, it's okay. So when I do push-ups, I look at every single one of my fingers and I make sure I press with each of my fingers, not just my palms. I like to make sure that when I'm doing it, my chest stays straight and I get my nose pretty close to the ground. This is probably not perfect form, but it works for me. So once you've done your set, you can go back into child's pose. Stretching your arms out here, feels great, right? <laughs> I'm even rolling my forehead on the mat here as a massage. Cause I, when I do this, my forehead crinkles. Like I can hear the connective tissue between my skin and my bone moving around. Cause it builds up if you don't stretch it. Oh, almost there, I promise. Next, we're gonna do our planks. If you wanna do a plank plank, feel free. I do the one where you grab your arms, make that little elbow thingy. Kick your feet out and just hold. One fun thing that you may not have done here before is notice the weight in your feet. So I've got my toes tucked like we did before. Push your weight further back and stretch your heels here. First of all, it distracts you from your upper body. Second of all, you're doing a different stretch. Now shift your weight really forward on your tippy toes. Notice how much more weight's going into your shoulders here. So you want to find that nice in between where your toes and your body balance with your arms. Breathing. Oh my gosh, I hate this one. <laughs> All right, we're good. <laughs> Hold it as long as you want, but I'm done. Child's pose. Oh. It used to be I would never, ever do my upper body. I hated it. But not having upper body strength, A, isn't good for your muscles or your bones. And at B, it just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't work when you're trying to do yoga. So I've built it up. I hate it, but I do it. I try to do it all the time. Find those exercises that work for you. Make them fun. Play around with them like we're doing here. All right, we're going into down dog. Find your dog. And now we're going to do the same kind of push-up-y move here. So feel your fingertips. Notice the weight in your fingers. Plant your toes, remember to stretch those toes out. Feel the weight of your fingers and your toes. Then you're gonna shift your weight forward into a plank. Not moving your hands or feet, push back into down dog. 
We're gonna do three to five, do as many or faster or slow as you want. But you're using your core, your abs, your arms to go into that plank from your dog. Good. This one also helps your shoulders. I had a shoulder injury. This really helps to keep them nice and loose. And then when you're done with that, stay in your dog. This is gonna be one of the last more intense poses of the lesson. So what you're gonna do is walk your hands back a little bit so that they're under your shoulders. It looks a little weird. Lower your knees, but don't touch the ground. So now you're in that tabletop with your knees up. Your toes are tucked. Notice we're doing that again. Hover here, pull those shoulders back, pull your abs in. Okay, this is beast. Use your abs, keep those knees hovering. You got this. If you need a break, you can drop your knees. It's okay. All right, drop your knees, take a breath. So I learned a little bit of animal style, or animal flow. It's really fun. <laughs> I'm not really good at it, I wanna practice more later. But one of the things that they do here is when you're in that lifted knee pose, you can push your weight into one hand and open up almost like you're doing the wild thing and flip over. So it'll put a little bit of pressure on your shoulder, but you should be able to flip. So try that, it keeps one hand planted, your feet will actually shift. Maybe try the other way. So when I do my routine, I have fun with it. And then you end up here. <laughs> so from here, we've gotten to our seat again. This is where we would do more boat, but I'm not gonna put you through that unless you want. So you can lower down. Whew. Congratulations, you've made it to the, <laughs> to the relaxing part of our practice with 15 minutes to go. <sighs> All right, take your knees in and give them a big hug. Oh, you deserve it. Come back to your intention here. Whatever that is. <sighs> and now we're gonna do our twist, so kick one leg out. Just like we did before, roll that ankle. Hug the knee in. And when you're ready, you're gonna guide that knee over one side and do your twist. Keep your shoulder blades down. Maybe extend that outer hand, whoops, without knocking down tombstones. And maybe look that opposite direction too. Again, if this doesn't work, find a different twist for you. Breathing into it, catching your breath, thanking your body for working hard. Open up, other side, and twist. Blinding what works on this side, noticing any differences. Now the next thing we're gonna do is option for pigeon or figure four. I'm gonna do pigeon, but I'll demonstrate figure four. So you have your knees up. For figure four, you would place one foot over the knee. You can stay there or you can pull it in. And for me, we're gonna go into pigeon, however works for you, so going into down dog lifting one leg up and then tucking that foot through. So your knees by your wrists, other knee can be at whatever angle works for your body. Back leg goes out, lifting the chest here and then lower over that leg. And breathe into it. If you're in your figure four, just hold it. You can have your figure four grasp on the thigh or you can have it pretty much anywhere that works for you. Inside the leg, outside both legs, inside one leg. If you're in pigeon and you notice that your tail's higher on one side, maybe you put, again, that block underneath. Speaking of tails, <laughs> I think I've lost mine permanently at this point. <sighs> if you want for a little bit more, which I love to do here for pigeon, notice the knee that's sticking out. Take the hand opposite of it, and we're gonna thread the needle under so that your hand is pointing the same way that your leg is. So you have a little twist, maybe a little bind. You can grab your toe here. Feel my toe? Again, do what works for you. And if you have that bind, 
release it. If you're in that pigeon, lift up first. Figure four is you can stay there for a little longer or you can go and relax and hug your knees in. If you're with me here, I always like to play around here and try and do those other pigeon moves. So I grab my leg, try and do a little bind. You don't have to, play around with it. You might just be able to grab your leg, that's fine too. Notice your hips. And then plant your foot when you're ready. Come on back to down dog. For those of you in figure four, make sure that both feet are on the ground, get ready to switch to the other side and then do so when you're ready. For us, leg comes up, stepping it through knee to wrist, moving your leg as needed. Back leg goes out, toes on tuck, straighten up first and then come down. Breathe here. And again, now if you want to do that thread the needle, you take the opposite arm, thread it under so that it's pointing the same direction as the leg. And then maybe you find that bind and grab your toe. Breathing into your pigeon or figure four. Finding what works for you. Few more breaths here. Again, coming back to your breath, coming back to your intention. And the unwind if you had that bind. Those in figure four, you can stay there a little longer. If you're with me, maybe play around with grabbing that back leg. Maybe finding that bind. Again, have fun. Back to down dog. Figure four, you can start to come out of it. Just stay on your back, we'll meet you there. This is your last dog. If you need to do a flow or anything else with your dogs, go right ahead. We're gonna meet again on our backs. So I'm gonna try kick through. <laughs> Watch me fall on my butt, but that's okay. Again, you wanna have fun here. So, there we go. Ta-da, magic. It's all about having fun, guys. And again, you can lower down through a boat one more time if you really want. So we're on our backs here. Okay, so we have time for my favorite legs up the wall first. So if you have a blank wall, uh, there we go. <laughs> you go to the wall, scooch up to it, say goodbye to your tombstones, and then you rotate into it. And kick your legs up the wall. So you want your bum to be pretty close to the wall here. This is cool looking on the screen. Your hands can be out in a T, they can be above you in a diamond. Find a position that works for you. Breathe here. For the legs, you have the option of just keeping them there. You can put your feet on the wall if that feels better. You can make a diamond. Just find what works for you. We're starting to cool down here. I'm gonna be here for a few minutes. So come back to your breath, enjoy the music. Thank your body for the interesting <laughs> rift wing style yoga slash cardio slash Halloween freaktacular. This is an inversion. Inversions help with blood flow. Taking anything that's gathered in your lower extremities allowing it to flow freely back to your body, allowing for more oxygenation, relaxation. Your feet are also up. I know this is obvious, but doing that gives your subconscious mind a feeling of safety because when your feet aren't on the ground, you're not about to run. So even if they say in Savasana, you have the option of putting your legs or feet on a block, to keep them off the ground, that's why. It gives you that subconscious feeling of letting go, of being able to completely relax. I'm gonna be here two more minutes. If you wanna change positions with your legs, feel free. You can even do a figure four here, <laughs> if that felt really good for your hips, or if you just wanna have fun. We have, again, that whole yoga video of yoga on the wall is one of my aid videos on YouTube. There's a whole bunch of fun stuff we do there. 
The world is yours. Find what works for you. I'm going to give you one minute of silence just to enjoy. Now, if you want to stay here for Savasana, you are more than welcome to. It's a great way to have your Savasana, especially because we're already here. If you're with me, you want to lower your legs to one side and try and kind of roll over. <laughs> Find your way onto your back for Savasana. Maybe you need a blankie to cool down. Maybe you need a drink of water first or set your music to something calmer. Wherever you are, find... <laughs> as my spooky house falls apart there we go good enough so for that savasana again maybe you want to try something a little different or if you're just doing a normal one because this is a spooky halloween style corpse pose right legs out arms out maybe adjust the flesh underneath your bum make sure you're nice and relaxed roll the shoulders down Roll your neck back and forth here. This is when I take the tomb and like stick it over me, except it's stuck to the cobwebs. <laughs> so, ah, I love Halloween. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take you through a guided meditation. Since it is my favorite and since we have time. So staying in your Savasana with your eyes closed. Come back to your breath. Come back to your intention. Enjoy the moment. Turn your focus to your toes. Maybe you need to wiggle your toes one more time. Wiggle your ankles. Focus your energy on every inhale to provide that relaxing breath. And every exhale, getting rid of any negative energy, any tightness. So that your feet are completely relaxed. And then migrate your consciousness and your energy to your lower legs and your kneecaps. And maybe if you need any other movements in your legs or kneecaps, maybe tighten them and let, let it go. With every breath, bringing in relaxation and every exhale, letting go of any other negativity or tightness so that your lower legs are completely relaxed and then turn your focus onto the whole of your leg including the upper legs and hips again adjusting where needed maybe tightening up those muscles one more time and then letting everything go in your legs with every inhale bringing in positive clean energy and every exhale, letting go of any tightness or negativity. So that your whole of your legs and lower body is completely relaxed. And focus on your lower back. Notice where you touch the ground. Feel those points connecting to the earth. As the body connects the earth and the earth connects to the spirit realm here on Halloween where the veil is thinnest. Maybe notice if there's any connections that you can feel beyond what you're touching on the ground. If your spine is tight, maybe finding any other movements or twists to enable the lower of your back to be completely relaxed. Focus on your belly, maybe even taking one hand and just rubbing circles one way to fully allow your belly and your guts, which got quite the stretch, to completely relax. Each inhale, bringing in pure air, feeling the movement of the diaphragm to your belly as it moves downward and outward. And with the exhale, all that negativity and stale air leaves your body, rustling like the leaves. 
So that your entire abdomen area and all of your lower body is completely relaxed. And then focus on the upper area of your body and your rib cage. Notice again where the points of your shoulders and your ribs touch the ground. Feel the grounding and the connections between your body and the earth. With each inhale, notice your ribs and how they expand, pressing deeper into the earth. And with the exhale, notice them shrink and pull in. Notice the whole of your abdomen working together with each deep breath. Each inhale, bringing in clean air and positivity. And each exhale, getting rid of negativity and any tightness or staleness so that your entire torso and lower body is now completely relaxed. And then focus on your arms, radiating energy down both arms, past the elbows, into the hands and fingertips, maybe moving your fingers one more time, noticing the creakiness, noticing even rolling your wrists here, how your body has differed from when we warmed them up earlier. And then allow them to settle back in, pressing the earth. Again, if you want to ground, have the palms facing down here. If you want to receive energy, palms facing up. And wherever you are, notice again the points of the body, the points of the arms that are pressing into the earth. Find stillness in your arms with each inhale, bringing in positivity and energy. With each exhale, getting rid of any negativity, tightness, soreness stillness so that the whole of your torso arms legs everything below the neck is completely relaxed and it's come to the neck maybe again one more neck roll side to side noticing the points of your head that are touching the ground and noticing the connection between your head shoulders back legs and heels where everything touches the ground. Notice the connection between your body and the earth. And maybe notice the connection between the beyond. Focusing on stillness. Focus on each breath. As you inhale positivity and energy and you exhale any negativity or staleness. Now bring your attention to your head and face. Release your tongue from the upper mouth. If you have it tight, release your jaw. Maybe move it around a little. Don't clench your jaw, just let it go. Maybe even wiggle your nose a little bit here. And then draw your attention up to the middle between your eyes, that little space, the little crease between your eyes. And if it's tight at all, Allow those inhales to completely relax the space between your eyes and forehead and jaw. And even behind your ears, notice your whole face. Let all those reactions and emotions go. With each inhale, breathing in positivity and relaxation. And with each exhale, breathing out any negativity or tightness. So the whole of your face, the whole of your torso, the whole of your arms and legs and heels and feet, it's all completely relaxed. Notice your body. We've talked about how it's touching the ground, all the points grounding you. Notice also in that relaxation, your body recharging, how it might feel like you're almost floating. Thanking your body for what it's done. And with that, draw all of the energy from your toes and heels up your body, across your lower legs, up past your knees and your upper legs, across your hips, up your torso, brushing past your fingertips and arms as the wave raises up across your chest and upper arms, through your neck and head. And glow all that energy out your crown chakra, feeling your body completely relax. If you'd like to stay in Savasana and enjoy the silence, you can do so now. And if you're with me, we're gonna start to come out. Take some deep breaths, 
Noticing your body and how it feels after that long guided relaxation. Again, maybe wiggling those fingers and toes. Feeling those deep breaths, noticing how different your body feels now. And when you're ready, go into a full body stretch. Rolling to one side and stay there on one side, maybe using an arm as a cushion in your fetal pose. So you've transitioned from corpse pose into the fetal position. This is especially important on Halloween. In yoga, that's the in-between from the stillness of corpse pose into whatever goes beyond for the rest of your day. And in Halloween, obviously, it's between what is here and what is beyond. So if there are any other connections that you need to make in that in-between, whether that's your intention, or if you wanna honor someone that's passed before you, allow that to happen now. If emotions come up, that's okay. Yoga is often a way to let go, to find peace. Honor yourself, your body, and others now in the in-between and take as long as you need here. And when you're ready, you can come up into a seat. Keeping your eyes closed, you're inviting a gentle gaze. Coming back to that intention, coming back to anything that's taken you from where you were before to where we are now. And with me, inhale, arms up taking your hands together, coming to your chest and deciding if you want to take that intention with you or if you have something else that you would like to do, have as your intention for the rest of your Halloween weekend or if this is later, the rest of your future. So set that intention now. And we're going to seal it the same way that we started with two breaths. First, a deep inhale and exhale. And then a really big inhale, the biggest of your practice, and let everything go. <sighs> and thank yourself for being here. Raise your thumb to your forehead again, your, your mind's center of intuition here, the third eye. The teacher and the spook in me honor us, the teacher and the student and the spook in all of you. Thank you so much for joining me for this very different and very fun Halloween practice. Namaste. So thank you again. I will be again doing aid yoga in November and December. Please look for invites and more on that to come. If you can find something like a foam roller or a weighted blanket, but there are ways and substitutes that I'll share. I will again be posting videos on YouTube and I'm really looking forward to a couple more cosplays this year. So if you have suggestions, I'll take those as well. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you for enjoying part of Halloween with me. And I hope that you will find more fun and hopefully some more relaxation as well. Stay hydrated and I'll see you all next time.